Suddenly, a loud, pulsating wail sounded from the hallway outside her apartment. Claire flinched. Crash! The body wash dropped to the floor, narrowly missing her big toe. Rosie barked furiously. Shit. Claire shut the water off, stumbling out onto the wet tile of her bathroom floor. She wrapped a towel around herself and threw open the door. The flashing light of the fire alarm system illuminated the gap beneath her front door. Groaning, she hesitated between her bedroom and bathroom. Should she try to fight her way back into the button-down shirt or risk having no clean laundry besides her Camp Susquehanna t-shirt from eighth grade? Emergency. All residents must immediately vacate the premises, a pre-recorded voice announced in her hallway. Ugh. Claire scuttled down the hallway with wet feet. There was no time for dilly-dallying about clothes. On the off chance that this was real, she had to save the essentials. She shrugged into a bathrobe and flung open the hallway closet. A pink backpack hung on a hook inside, and she yanked it off the wall. Darting from room to room, she tossed in a picture of her and her mom, her wallet, phone, Rosie's favorite stuffed toy, her laptop, and Tyler and Aaron's proposal binders. Between those essentials and the water filtering straw and emergency flashlights, the backpack was at capacity. With a wistful look at her row of designer shoes, she closed the closet door and padded back to the front door. Damn you, Mrs. Klein and your burnt popcorn, she said. The third floor resident had set off the fire alarm twice last year. Claire threw her front door open, tightening the sash of her robe with one hand while the other clutched Rosie's leash. The backpack dug so deeply into her shoulders it might as well have been filled with bricks. Maybe she needed to switch to virtual binders. Claire joined the shuffle of sleepy residents heading toward the staircase. She didn't smell smoke or burnt popcorn, but she didn't like to take chances. Oh, Mrs. Dodge, you really shouldn't take the elevator. She rushed over and gripped the arm of her kind and elderly neighbor. Nonsense, if I lived through World War II, I can live through this damn fire alarm, Mrs. Dodge said, stubbornly pressing the down button. The elevator was a dimly lit, outdated nightmare at the best of times, and a fire, it would be a death trap. How about you come with me? Claire suggested in her best customer service voice, trying to banish the mental image of the elderly woman trapped in an elevator as the world burned around her. All right, fine. At least let me walk your dog, Mrs. Dodge said, extending a hand for Rosie's leash. Claire happily released the leash to Mrs. Dodge and helped her down the remaining three flights of stairs and then outside. A handful of stars were scattered across the inky black of the night sky. The temperature had once again dived sharply into the 50s. A breeze bit at Claire's calves, still coated in small beads of water. She retreated to the far end of the walkway in front of her building, shivering and drawing the robe more tightly around her. A crowd of neighbors grew, most of them retirees with bifocals and fuzzy slippers. A fire truck pulled up to the curb, siren blaring and lights flashing. A handful of firefighters leapt off the truck and entered the building. Claire blushed as one glanced at her. She hadn't even had a chance to wash the shampoo out of her hair. She sat on the low brick wall that lined the entrance to the apartment building, crossing her legs at the ankle and sitting erect as though someone was going to come by with a ruler and judge her posture. Doozer, a neighborhood English mastiff who weighed more than Claire, lumbered up to her and Rosie. His owner, Chuck, was infamous for never leashing him. Rosie recognized her friend and play bowed, tiny stub of a tail wiggling. The dogs circled repeatedly, bounding after each other and barking. Rosie gently nipped at Doozer's ankles. Rosie, don't, Claire sighed. She eased the backpack off and set it on the wall next to her. If this leash broke, Doozer's owner certainly wasn't going to be any help tracking the dogs down. Chuck was 30 yards down the sidewalk smoking a cigarette under a streetlight. Doozer had somehow looped a leg through Rosie's leash. Claire stood and bent at the waist. 
a gust of wind descended, and her robe flapped in the wind. Doozer grabbed the end of her robe and tugged. Doozer, no, that's not a toy, Claire cried, but it was too late. He ripped at the robe, tearing it from her body and darting off across the front lawn. Claire shrieked and lunged for it, but she had forgotten about the low wall. While Doozer and her robe cleared it easily, Claire slammed her shins into it and tumbled, completely naked, through the frigid night air. She landed in a holly bush, sticks jabbing her in a number of unmentionable places. How? she said breathlessly, stunned by the impact. For a moment, she simply looked at the night sky. What had she done to piss off the big guy upstairs? She had just wanted to get through the hearing without any issues. Instead, Luke's mother had publicly slandered her. Her mother had nearly been arrested, and she had screamed at her lying boyfriend in the front yard like she was auditioning for an episode of Jerry Springer. Now she was lying naked in a bush while her apartment building might be on fire. Where could she go from here? <laughs>